Well, for sure it was hard to adjust to the conditions which are totally different than in Ostrava, but I'm pretty happy that, um, that I started well even though we had this uh, pretty awful start. So um, so yeah, it was it was, it was was hard also because Kiman, she plays a great top spin, so I needed to adjust to that after playing with uh, girls who are playing more lower balls. You would like stand up to practice and it would start missing. <laughs> sit down and it would stop and just back and forth. Did you did you kind of ask them at some point like hey can we just wait until we're sure it's not gonna um well you can always ask but it's not our decision so um for me it didn't make sense to stay on court um in the sweater. I I don't know if they had any like I don't know uh if oh, if, if it's gonna stop or not but uh at the end it stopped after like I don't know 15 minutes so um, it's a shame that we couldn't Beginning. Did you have issues with the, the restraining with the rackets with the tension just because of the conditions being different, uncertain? Well, for sure, um, it's better to string it a little bit lower, the tension, so um, I wouldn't say it was an issue, but uh, it wasn't that obvious for me because still I thought that I'm, I'm going to play here and it's going to be a little bit warmer, so, uh, so for sure it's a good experience for the next match. How was the ball in terms of being heavy, whether it was being a little damp and being able to create the pace? Um, well, I like these balls, um, so, so yeah, I feel pretty comfortable with them, but um, I still feel like on some rallies I I played like I would play with Australian Opens that I had um, in Europe, so um, so yeah, it's, it's tricky when you have just like three days to get used to them, and, uh, and for sure I mean, I like the fact that this match was a little bit longer, so um, I was able to yeah, adjust at the end, and, and um, I felt the rhythm a little bit better at the end, yeah. Talk a little bit more about why she is a tricky opponent. I mean, she's definitely the top spin aspect, but there's other... Well, um, it's just she's, she, she can play in different rhythms. Sometimes she's, she can really loosen up her head and play As number one, do you pay attention to some of the players that are up and coming that people think, oh, you know, she's going to be really, really good? And do you look forward to playing them and challenging yourself to see if they're really as good as people say they might be? Well, I don't know exactly who you're talking about. Well, for Zheng today, for one, but just okay. for example, you know, players who, oh, well, you know, they're coming up and people say, oh, she's going to be good. Do you want to look and say, I want to see for myself? Um, at some point I know it's going to happen anyway, so it's not like I'm really waiting for it. There are so many players who are, I don't know, there's so much variety on tour that you have to be playing with, you know, legends that already won a couple of Grand Slams and uh, are really experienced and we're, I'm, I don't know. Well, it's not like I'm looking forward to it that much. Um, but I'm always curious what's gonna if they're gonna be able to like I don't know handle the pressure and just being on tour um, from January to till November it's it's pretty hard so um, so yeah it's I'm just curious uh, but for sure if if they have like professional people around around them they're gonna be able to do that so. Well, there are things that you're still trying to figure out, and you're number one, right? Well, How to handle the still, tour, the year, everything. But still, it's only the second um, full year for me on tour, so um, so yeah, it's it's not like I have you know full experience. You talked the other day about not wanting to be the face of everything, but right now, you know, with your success, with your position, that's what people want. You, you're the one that everyone wants to have. For lack of a better, a piece of. How is your team helping you with that, and maybe helping you pick and choose the opportunities that you want to do, but not overwhelm yourself? Well? Yeah. Well, without them, I would be, I would say, lost. Uh, I wouldn't be able to to know where the the limit is, you know. So um, it's like completely, I would say, 
I'm, I'm pretty grateful that I have them and it's, it's them who are like giving me my good path so um, so yeah are you when you let's say get a sponsorship opportunity are you a final decision maker in that or you know I'm sure the team influences but at the end of the day well it... the team that, um, that that is with me on the tour um, I would say like business side there's a um, like they're not involved in in like business right. side of my sport so um, so yeah I'm the decision maker but I have people um, who are also who are taking care of me uh, and these are not these people because I have PR manager I have manager so yeah how important do you think they are right now for you I mean For me, the most important thing is what I do on court. Mm -hmm. But for sure, managing the, the business side is, is it's really important because I don't want to like I don't know waste the opportunity that I have, you know. So um, I would say after Ron Karras, <coughs> um, I had like a couple of months when I was free, focused on that, and I wanted to really have good people around me so they can help me and, and guide me. And uh, but these few months weren't like. Um, I wasn't at the right place, you know. I feel better when I'm just focusing on tennis. Yeah.